Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to It Came from DC Comics here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a film from 2011. That movie is All-Star Superman. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I've never had the opportunity to read the comic this is based on. I've never gotten a chance to read All-Star Superman. I've heard nothing but great things, considering the fact that the writer of the comic was Grant Morrison, Grant Morrison being a ridiculously polarizing writer, and even some of his staunch just critics have heaped praise on the book this thing is based on. I am expecting this movie to be awesome. Um, I didn't know a thing about about the plot at, until I read the back of this. Apparently, uh, Lex, Lex Luthor has cooked up a plan, yet another plan, to try to kill Superman, but this one works. So now Superman is slowly dying, and he's coming to grips with the fact that he is going to, you know, die and he has to put all of his affairs in order and uh, still do his normal superhero duties. Sounds really fascinating to me. I have high hopes on this. Uh, I really do want this movie to be to be good, guys, and considering the fact that everything else from, from DC has been awesome in terms of these direct-to-video animated films, I have a strong feeling it's going to be good. The question now is just, how good is it going to be? And the only way I'm going to find that out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out All-Star Superman. So, Superman has the ability to make suns on his cosmic anvil. I don't quite remember that being amongst the things Superman could do inside of his fortress, but it is definitely fucking cool. So, Superman can beat both Samson and Atlas at arm wrestling at the same time. Interesting. Hopefully that also is the last we see of Samson and Atlas, because those two characters were ridiculously irritating. You know, guys, I've seen a lot of stories involving involving Jimmy Olsen. This is probably Jimmy at his most punchably douchiest. And my god, man, I just want to lay into him. He's such an irritating little fucking turd. And he, he's only been in two scenes. That should really tell you exactly how irritating a character Jimmy is in here. I want to just see him die... And he's been in the movie for maybe all of 45 seconds. Damn! Okay. So, I guess if you kill Superman's pet, fucking, like, son, friggin' eater, man, he gets pissed. I would never have guessed that. It was really fucking awesome, though. Well, guys, that was All-Star Superman. Wow. That was... amazing. Alright, let's, uh, shut that off. Well, I know what I'm doing as soon as I'm done filming. I'm going on Amazon. I'm going to see if I can find the fucking trade for All-Star Superman. Because, <laughs> goddammit, I want to give that book a read now. Um, because, uh... This movie, I'm going to tell you, is by far the greatest Superman story I've ever seen. And I want to see what they cut to compress 12 issues down to less than an hour and 20 minutes. Because I'm going to assume that everything that they cut is going to make the thing even fucking better. So, yeah, um, let's talk about the writing. So... Our story is fucking phenomenal, guys. Uh, there actually are moments when I found myself on the verge of tears because the movie does hit you really hard because, well, one scene that uh, really hit me hard is uh, when Superman is visiting the grave of his father, well, his, his Earth father, John, and... He's basically saying goodbye to him, and then Ma Kent shows up, and it then dawns on you. He never told her that he was dying. And he still never, never does. But you do know, it's the last time he's ever going to see her. 
and it's touching. It just hits you like a fucking truck. Guys, the ending is going to hit you. I, right now, am, am almost on the verge of tears just because the ending was so powerful and so touching. Again, I want to see how the comic handled it, because I, I can almost assume that the comic is going to handle it even better. Our story, guys, is about Superman dying. That is literally the entire plot. And unlike any other attempt to tell a story like that, it's not, Superman is dead, no, wait, he's, no, wait, he's not. His heart has slowed down to a fucking rate where we can't even track it. No, no, none of that shit. This is, Superman is dying. And, uh, little spoiler, he is dead by the end of the film. And throughout the entire thing, you know that he's dying. Like, that honestly is not even a spoiler. That right there is, like, first act shit. And you find out that the reason why he's dying is because he got too close to the sun, his, and his body, and his body absorbed too much solar fucking radiation, and it's causing his cells to break down. So now he's trying to, so now he's trying to complete everything that he started. And it's, great. Our characters here are amazingly written, with the one lone exception being Jimmy Olsen. Every time Jimmy Olsen is in, is, is in a scene, I want someone to just turn around and fucking deck him. There is something ridiculously douchey about how Jimmy Olsen was, was written, but barring him, every other character is amazingly written. Uh, I really loved, out of everything here, probably the one shining, shining, you know, example of characters written very well, is Luthor. Luthor still has this hard mindset of getting his vengeance against Superman. In fact, it's one of Luthor's schemes that leads to Superman dying. Luthor knows that he... Luthor knows that Superman is dying. Luthor knows that he's going to die because of it. I'm not going to go into details why. And so Luthor just wants to live long enough to see Superman die. And then there's a turning point towards the end of the film. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of spoilers here. And that scene is... A, it, it's so well written. Guys, everything in this is so well written. Uh, you are not going to be able to stop watching it. You are going to be absolutely transfixed to the screen for the, what, hour and 15 minutes the sucker runs. It's only an hour and 15 minutes, but my God, just like every other DC film, it packs so much in there. Unfortunately, because it packs so much in there, this right here is like the one lone negative I have, and it's one I've and it's one I've levied against a lot of these DC animated films, is they have to cut a lot of shit in order to get this stuff to fit in such a tiny little time, in such a tiny time frame. So, we have Superman meeting with two astronauts from fucking Krypton who, who followed, who followed the, uh, who followed the uh, warp, who followed the warp signature of the rocket Superman rode in as a child, and they come to Earth. That takes, like, all of, I'm not even joking, five minutes in this film. When that story, all by itself, could have been a movie unto itself. You see. Um, I think that's the big reason why I, I want to get the comics, is because I'm going to assume that the, that the arc with them is not going to be like a seven-page run. It's probably like a two or three issue affair. Uh, that to me is like the one issue is if this thing would have been pumped up to maybe two hours or even two and a half hours, you might even have to go up to three hours. You would probably have had a far a far deeper story. And because they have such a small time frame, they they aren't able to go as deep in, into a lot of this as they probably could have or should have. And it does leave it feeling a little bit shallow when you start really thinking about it. However, though, when, when, you are, when you are watching it, you are not going to give a shit about any of that because there is enough there to keep you absolutely focused. And that is amazing. That is awesome, and I fucking love it. 
So, uh, writing. Writing for the writing for the time frame given is great. And uh, the only thing I can fault on it is the fact that it's so goddamn short it can't really tell the story as well as it probably could be told. What about the acting? Our acting from everybody is stellar. Uh, our entire cast turns in a masterful showing. I guys am even counting the fact that we have Steve fucking Blum in this, Steve Blum, Steve Bloom, in this thing. He plays two characters with the with the exact same voice, which of course is exactly what he always does in every acting role he fucking does. But I don't care, because even then, with those two characters he played, he did, he did a great job with them both. So I'm not going to bitch much. So, everybody else, though, turned in an amazing show. We got to see Ed Asner again as Perry White, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, if there's any actor who was born to play Perry fucking White, it was, it was Ed Asner, and he does it amazingly for the, for the scant few scenes that Perry White is in. And the rest of our cast are fantastic. They are, they are amazing. I could not imagine casting anybody else in these, in the, in these roles with this story. It was perfect casting from start to finish, and that is something I loved. Our acting never fucking lets up. And that, I think, is what really helps strengthen the fact that we have a... It, it really does help strengthen the fact that we have such an awesome, albeit rushed, story is the fact that the actors are not are not giving a fucking inch, and it just turns the whole thing into a masterpiece. All right, so uh, so yeah, writing here is great. Our acting here is great. Animation here is amazing. The art style. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was who uh, did the art for all for All Star Superman, but I think it was Frank Quitely. I think this actually kind of matches his style. They were able to take his style. Modify it slightly, of course, to, in order for, I mean, in order to make it, you know, flow a little bit better in animation and make it work. And that's awesome. That was great. I really liked how, and this, again, is part of, and this sex is part of Quitely's art style, is he doesn't do Superman's cape like just this extra little, you know, like sheet that's that. No, no, no. He actually has the thing directly tucked in, and you actually see all of the wrinkles and ripples. And Superman's bodysuit isn't tights. You actually do see ripples and all this because it is a little bit on the loose side. And it looks great. It actually adds a little bit of realism to Superman as a character, and they captured that in this film. And it looks great. It does. It looks absolutely phenomenal. So, guys, animation, art style, all of that here is good. Our sound mix is great. Our score is... Our, our score almost rivals what John Williams did for the Superman movies. This is a truly epic Superman score. Mind you, it's... Not as good as John Williams' outing, but then again, that's because that's John fucking Williams. But god damn it, it is a close second. It is, it is, it is a great score. And speaking of close seconds, All-Star Superman here would probably be my all-time favorite DC animated film, if not for the existence of The Dark Knight Returns. I don't think anything is going to top just the epic awesomeness of that film, but god damn it, this sucker comes ridiculous. Ridiculously close. Can I recommend All-Star Superman? You bet your fucking ass I can. And if you haven't seen it, man, you totally have to go out and watch it. This is, without question, the greatest Superman story ever told. It's probably, it's probably not the greatest Superman film ever made because... Once more, they had to rush through a whole lot of the story, but what is here, in terms of story, is better than anything any other Superman film has ever touched on. And if they had more time to work on everything, this thing would have towered above every other Superman film in existence. That is how good the story here is, and that is really one of those reasons why I can't stand the fact that DC insists. Warner Brothers and DC insist on these short run times. Because this thing could have very, this thing could have very well become my favorite DC animated film of all time, if they would have had at least an extra half an hour or more to try to 
to try to add more depth to everything, to try to tell even more of the story. And because they had to rush it, not only can I highly recommend this, but goddammit, as soon as I'm done filming this fucker, I'm going to go on Amazon, I'm going to buy the fucking trade, and as soon as it comes in, I'm probably going to cover to cover the son of a bitch the moment that it hits my doorstep. Because goddammit, I want the whole story. So yes, guys, this movie is fantastic. I can absolutely recommend it to anybody. Mind you guys, I, I really have to stress this. This is coming from somebody who's not even a Superman fan. And I'm telling you right now, you need to see this movie. It is that fucking good. Holy shit, yes, this movie is a masterpiece. And once more, if... DC didn't 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 make that two and a half hour epic that is the Dark Knight Returns. This son of a bitch would be the best DC animated film ever fucking made. Now, All Star Superman came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Kev. You can find his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash MJ Knight. Kev, dude, I fucking thank you. I had doubts going into this again because I'm not a big Superman fan, but holy shit. This thing was a masterpiece. I'm, I, 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 I totally understand, guys. I've been talking for this long, but I'm almost rendered speechless by how awesome this film was. Uh, I am truly, truly surprised at the high quality of this thing, and I wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't have sent it in, and for that I thank you. You're fucking amazing, dude. Once more, that is youtube.com slash user slash Knight. Now, I'm going to go on Amazon, I'm going to try to find the trade for this thing, and then I think I'm going to find a couple more Superman movies to watch. I was talking about, I was talking about the John fucking Williams score, I'm going to go watch Superman and Superman 2. And if I still have time, if I'm still awake after that, shit, I'm going to watch Superman's 3 and 4 too, why not? I am in a Superman mood, and god damn it, that feels awesome! And with that, my friends, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.